Uh, okay, so uh, that's it for the uh, sort of intense cryptography part of the course. We will definitely see cryptography again, probably even today, okay, but we'll certainly see it in uh, substantial quantities when we get to the next section, which is on protocol. You know, that's sort of an application of cryptography in a sense. So we'll see this stuff being used. We won't have to study it quite the same level, quite the same depth as we did here, but we will certainly see this stuff again. There's just no escaping. Uh, okay, access control. Um, so the way uh, your uh, knowledgeable author uses the term access control, he uses it to mean two different things, okay? There's two parts to access control, authentication and authorization. So authentication means I come up to my computer and I say, hey, computer, I want to get access, right? I want to do something. So my name is Mark Stamp, and I say that to my computer. My computer says, prove it, prove that you're Mark Stamp. How do I prove that I'm Mark Stamp? Password. Type in my password. Okay, so username and password is sort of the usual way that you authenticate. There are other ways, and we'll talk about those briefly, but um, the point is it's kind of a zero one thing. Either you're authenticated or you're not, right? You either get access or you don't. Okay, once you get access, what are you allowed to do? That's the issue of authorization. Now, if I'm an administrator, once I get access, what can I do? Anything I want. Okay, so, but you know, if my son logs onto my computer and wants to play games or something, what can he do? <laughs> play games. Well, hopefully he can't throw all my stuff in the trash and hit, you know, delete, right? So, you know, which he likes to do. So there's limits. <coughs> so there are restrictions on what you're allowed to do once you got access. So implicit here is that you've been authenticated, and now what are you authorized to do? Now this is not a z zero one thing, right? It's some level. You have some le level of authorization as to what you're allowed to do. Oh, okay. Now, uh, in cryptography, the terminology is fairly well standardized. Okay, most books you see would use almost the same terminology, a few, with a few exceptions. But for the most part, it's pretty consistent. In almost all the rest of security, the terminology is very inconsistent. Okay, so you need to be really careful if you look at other books, you know, or other sources. They may use the same term, but it may have different meaning. And here's an example. A lot of misguided authors use the term access control as a synonym for authorization. Okay, here it has a broader meaning, right? It includes both uh, authentication and authorization. <coughs> okay, here's your quotes. I just love this Monty Python thing. Guard, halt, who goes there? Any of you fans of uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail will appreciate that. And the second one has to do with uh, uh, biometrics, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Okay, so are you who you say you are? Well, that's hard to say. Are you who you say you are? Okay, so the issue is how do we authenticate a human to a machine? So again, you know, if I come up to this computer and I say, I'm Alice, the computer says, prove it, I prove it by entering a password. That's the usual thing. Now, there are other ways, and there's kind of an easy way to remember the different possible modes of authentication here. The authentication can be based on something you know, something you have, or something you are. Okay, so something you know really is just synonymous with password, okay? Something you have to know in order to get access, right? <coughs> uh, something you have could be something like a smart card. It could be uh, even just a laptop that has a certain MAC address. It could be, uh, you know, a badge you have at work. It could be an ATM card, right? anything like that. Something you have to have in your possession. Something you are refers to biometrics, okay? Things like your fingerprint, voice recognition, facial recognition, um, all those kind of things. Now it is true, you do have a fingerprint, but don't get that confused. Okay. You do have a password. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, so we're going to look at the something you know case here uh, today. So something you know again is uh, passwords. Mm -hmm. Oh, excuse me. 
Okay, so when you type in your password on your computer, clearly that's a password. But if you think about it, something you know that gives you access to computing resources, there are lots of things that act like passwords. Okay, things that we don't call passwords that serve this purpose. Can you give me some examples? Something that acts like a password? Something you need to know to get access? Uh, username is not really a secret. That's something everybody knows. That's not quite the same, right? This is something that's supposed to give you access. Yeah. I know that, like on Android phones, like there's an option to like lock your cell phone. When you un unlock, you have to drag your finger across, like. Oh, okay. So that's kind of like a biometric thing, right? Uh, no, no. Basically, just, to just like your points. Yeah, oh, and you okay. have to drag oh, okay. it across oh, okay. in the correct order. That's okay. like directory and file names. Directory and file names. Okay, well here we're just looking to get access to the computer to begin with, okay? So, well, you guys are making this too hard. <laughs> so, maybe I'm making this too hard. Okay, so, uh, for example, if you have an ATM card, you don't have a password that goes with that, but you have a PIN, yes. pin okay? The PIN is really acting like a password, but we don't usually call it a password, we call it a PIN. How about if you go to a website and you forgot your password? How then do you get access? Secret questions. You answer some secret question, right? Except about the secret question, except they make you pick preset questions that everyone does the answer to. <laughs> right? What's your dog's name? How were you born in? I didn't say it was good, but it's something you need to know in order to get access, right? So, you know, your secret, you know, your favorite color, your, you know, where you're from, and those kind of things. So those are acting like passwords in this sense, right? Something you know to get access. Okay. So your secret, uh, secret question that you have to answer. Okay, so what's the problem with passwords? There's lots of problems. Here's just a couple of quotes from uh, security books, from Ross Anderson's security book says, the passwords are one of the biggest practical problems facing security engineers today. Here's another quote from um, another security book, which I think really kind of hits the nail on the head here. It says, humans are incapable of securely storing high-quality cryptographic keys, and they have unacceptable speed and accuracy when performing cryptographic operations. They're also large, expensive to maintain, difficult to manage, and they pollute the environment. It's astonishing these devices continue to be manufactured. <laughs> okay, but they really, they hit the nail on the head here. The issue is cryptographic keys. Okay, the problems with passwords, you know, could all be solved if we gave everybody a cryptographic key. So let's just give everybody out there a 256-bit AES key, and we've solved all the problems with passwords. How do we remember that? Okay, what's the problem? I can't remember a 256-bit <laughs> key, so what are you going to do? Write it, down. Write it down on a post-it note and stick it on the front of your computer, right? Because that's the only way you'll ever log in. Okay, so kind of defeated the whole point of having passwords in the first place. Okay, so why passwords? Okay, given that we do have alternatives, you know, something you have and something you are, those are viable alternatives and much stronger, you know, generally speaking, than passwords. So why do we stay with passwords? Easy to implement. What? Easy to implement. Uh, easy to implement. And what? cheap. Extra cheap, okay, there we go. Money, it all comes down to money, right? Okay, how much do passwords cost? Nothing. Last time I checked, they were free. Okay. <laughs> Now, how much does a biometric cost? Yeah. Well, I don't care how cheap the system is, you have to have something to do the scan, right? So that costs a little bit of money. Even you know, a smart card, right, costs a little bit of money. Even if it's a dollar, okay, for a thousand employees, that adds up, okay, where passwords are free. Okay, so cost is an issue. What else? Is there any other, uh, any other potential uh, advantage to passwords? Like say the, say the, you're using fingerprint authentication and your fingers get damaged? Yeah, I mean, exactly right. Okay, convenience, right? If you forget your password, you call up the system administrator, they reset your password. Your thumbprint biometric stops working, you call up the system administrator, they issue you a new thumb. And it just doesn't work. Okay. So, you know, cost and convenience. Okay, so uh, just to drive home this point, keys versus passwords. Okay, let's look at an example here involving uh, cryptographic keys. Suppose you have a key that's 64 bits, okay? Now an exhaustive key search is how much work in this case? This is a symmetric key here. 
2 to the 63, right? You have to try 2 to the 63 keys before you, you know, half the possible keys before you expect to stumble across the correct one. Okay, let's contrast that with uh, passwords. Let's suppose we have a system that has, where all the passwords are eight characters, and for each character, somehow or another, we can get 256 different choices. <laughs> I don't know, shift, alt, control, alt, <laughs> shift, I don't know. Somehow we got 256 choices for each character. So how many different passwords are there? Two hundred fifty-six to the eighth. Don't put eight to the two hundred fifty-six. That will be wrong on the test. <laughs> two hundred fifty-six choices to the eighth power, which is two to the sixty-four. Okay, look, we have two to the sixty-four passwords, two to the sixty-four keys. This is just as secure, right? We use these passwords over here. We're good to go. What's the difference? Yeah, you don't pick passwords. That's the whole point, right? Is that you can remember a password. So you don't pick passwords at random. You pick them from some set of easily rememberable <coughs> things, a relatively small set. So how does that make uh, Trudy's job easier? How does that make the attacker's job easier? Trudy goes to the internet, Google's for a list of most common passwords. And starts right, there. exactly, okay. Yeah, she, Trudy can create a dictionary of common passwords, right, and start her search there and have a much better chance of finding a password than finding a randomly selected key where you have to just, where there's no smart search at all. You just have to try them on. Okay, so again, the point is users don't select passwords at random. Right? There actually are like, databases of what the most common passwords are. Yes. How do you compile that data if supposing their passwords are secret? I don't know, that's a good question. <laughs> but there's all kinds of, I mean there's, there's I mean there's all kinds of password cracking tools and they have built in dictionaries of all sorts. So yeah. It's even easier in some sense. Many many cases what you store is an encrypted version of the password with a certain algorithm. Crack once you check against the dictionary of stuff. Uh, well, we'll talk. We'll talk about that. Okay. So hold hold that.